This is a video about the Manosphere movement called the Red Pill. It's about the Red Pill, its thought leaders, especially Rollo Tomassi, and about the dynamics of misogyny and abusive mindsets in the Red Pill. I felt compelled to do this video. Why? Because the Power Moves in many ways is a Red Pill website. To begin with, the Power Moves deals with power and power dynamics, with dating and intersexual dynamics. Second, the audience on the Power Moves obviously overlaps with the Red Pill. And third, because the Power Moves was one of the very first websites to be added to the Red Pill archive, meaning that somebody in the Red Pill thought that the Power Moves was a typical Red Pill website. However, I want to distance myself and the website from the Red Pill, because quite frankly, the Red Pill is full of crap. Now, to put that in less vulgar terms, I do believe that the Red Pill is toxic and bitter. And while it clocks itself under the guise of being unadulterated truth and helping man to develop, in truth, it's a big cover-up for misogyny and abusive mindsets. Now, those are some very strong statements to make, but watch the video until the end and you will understand why that's exactly the case. We will analyze in this video the red pill along four crucial components that make the backbone of its misogyny. Number one, it's the abusive and controlling mindsets that the red pill promotes and embraces including in its most famous thought leaders. Number two, it's the entitlement to unconditional love. Number three is the belief of women as inferior, untrustworthy, or generally not as good as men. And finally, number four, is the general view in the red pill of men and women locked into a war. So let's start with the first one, the abusive and controlling attitude. Let's start with something that you might not expect, abortion. Now, abortion is a thorny subject, and where you stand on it also depends on your religious views. However, we can all agree that no matter where you stand on abortion, it's a tool of empowerment and choice for women. And where does the red pill stand on abortion? It's a tool of choice and empowerment to be taken away from women. Let's see the video. If, if you want to know why uh, women look for, uh, you know, was it a child support, when it looks for um, uh, abortion rights, abortion rights is the easiest one to do here because the reason why women uh, need abortion rights or they, they cling to this, uh, they will fight tooth and nail and they'll celebrate it now when it comes into an area like a country or whatever that didn't have it before is because it's a fail safe against making bad reproductive choices. So if she has sex with a guy that she, you know, didn't, doesn't really want to have kids with, there's always that option. Not every woman will, but any woman can, because what it is, is it's taking control. If abortion didn't exist, it is removing hypergamous control away from women, and it's putting it at least in the hands of society, if not other men or whatever. Now, Rollo Tomasi was very careful not to come out in the open with his real thoughts about abortion. But a quick search on his Twitter feed quickly tells you what he really thinks about it. See, look, society has gone quite on the extreme when it comes to reproductive rights and about child support. For sure, I think that a man should have a say on whether or not he has to become a father in the future. And it's completely ridiculous that he might be forced to pay, as it happened, for a child that is not biologically his. On the other hand, any person who is a neutral observer on the topic should observe that it's the woman who carries the baby for nine months, who has to feed it, who has to deliver it, and who will keep investing, who has to keep investing on the baby for several years to come. So this neutral observer should at least recognize that the woman should have a lot of saying on whether or not to actually go on with a pregnancy. The fact that the red pill and its gurus want to take the right away from women tells you a lot about their controlling and abusive mindsets. A second example of the red pill, abusive and controlling attitude, comes from the idealization of more controlling cultures or religions as an example, Islam. 
Let's see here. Because I use Muslim culture as a as an example because I use that I use Muslim culture or what Islamic culture because a lot of people say well it, you know Muslims are far more alpha it's uh, Mus uh, Islam is the way if you want to have a solid marriage if you want to be whatever and my my take on that is they are still a culture and an ethnicity or whatever you want a religion that still has a it still has a default authority for the masculine in it but even that is being eroded such as Rollo point of view is yeah islam is better but even them they are getting a little bit too soft in their controlling ways and look don't get me wrong here this is not a channel of virtue signaling or sjv i believe the top flight men are the leaders of their households and I believe that happens naturally when you're a high quality man. I'm Italian and there is a word for this in Italian. The word is capo familia. Literally translated means head of the household, head of the family. There is a difference between an healthy capo familia and an abusive one. A healthy capo familia, the woman wants him to be the head of the family and the whole family recognize him as the lighthouse, so to speak, of the family. That's because he adds value. That's because he earns his place. The abusive mindset is different. The abusive mindset doesn't think about earning it. The abusive mindset is about, I am owed it. Now, let's see another video example. You and your mental point of origin saying, okay, how's this going to affect me right. first? Because I'm going to, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I will do. And my family falls in line or falls along right. with that as well, no matter what it is that, that you know, my, my decisions are. Falls in line with what I say, no matter what it is. There you have it. The controller dream. It doesn't matter what I say or decide, you must fall in line because I say it. What do you think? Is that a mindset about adding value? Is that a mindset about me being the captain but you being the co-captain and we decide together? Or is that an abusive and controlling mindset? And again, I must repeat the obvious. This is not a channel about perfect equality or about deferring to any freaking body. So if some decisions are important for the man, it's fair that he pushes on them. And you might even say, this is important to me, so I'm going to do it. I hope you can follow me, otherwise I will have to do it and go ahead and do it by myself. The high quality mindset, it's very different. I don't need anybody to fall in line, but because you tend to be a high quality person, the result is actually similar. The woman and the family in the end will follow you, but because they want to follow you, that's the big difference. Pull or push. If you push, what happens? You usually get a push back. And if you pull, what happens? Usually people want to follow you. So the difference is that the abuser, he pushes. I said, you do it. If you don't, I'm gonna push harder and harder. The high quality mindset is pulling. I wanna do this. And because I have earned the respect, people are far more likely to follow you. Make sense? Number two, entitlement to unconditional love. This is a chat between Rollo Tomasi and Pat Campbell. What happened is that Pat Campbell's daughter got pregnant and she told her mother, but before telling her mother, told her, please don't tell my dad, promise you will not tell my dad. And then she told her. So the mother didn't tell to his husband for around two weeks. Two weeks later, they finally tell Pat. This is his reaction. Women's brains are hardwired. They, they intuitively, instinctually go with the kid. The loyalty is with the kid. But here's the bottom line. I was here before the kid. Your loyalty should be with me, right? Mm. I, you, because without me, none of this happens. The, the family isn't here. The kids aren't here. I'm, right. it's, it's, it's almost like a, a chain of command. The chain of command. That already tells you a lot about the attitude of this guy towards his family. It's another big red flag for me, but let's skip it for now.
Pat expected his wife to betray her word with the daughter and immediately let him know. To me, that's already a very poor mindset. If somebody came to me and said, I promise not to say this to you, but I'm going to tell you anyway, I would immediately think less of them. And then I would immediately stop them. Whoa, 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 whoa. I would say, don't put me in between these games. If you promised, please keep your word. And if I need to know, go back to the person and tell them that I need to know so they need to tell me. Don't put me in the middle of these games. I promise not to tell you, but I'm telling you anyway, but let's pretend I didn't tell you. No, 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 no. Speak up, speak fairly, and speak straight. But look what Rolo Tomasi replies. Um, I think, and, and beta men, beta blue pill men, well, blue pill guys, blue pill condition guys, Will think of this all the time they will they will think that yeah of course she should of course she should put the kid first of course mm. that should be their priority but what they don't realize is exactly what you just said which is i'm the one that makes all this happen i'm the linchpin in this in this family because without me these mm. things don't happen or they don't happen as easy and notice the aggressive and poor aisle frame. If you don't think like this, then you're a blue pill, then you're a beta male. So infantile, man. What's truly blue pill is this fantasy of being the top priority no matter what. I have a very good friend, a great guy, but he's got this blue pill fantasy of being put first no matter what. The dream girlfriend of this friend of mine is the girl that if he goes to prison, she will hustle to raise the bail money for him. Now I get the fantasy and in a way it's beautiful. It's a little bit the story of the Joker and Harley Quinn, but it's a fantasy and it's very much a blue pill fantasy of that. Let's keep going. But, um, it's my belief that women need to at least learn to sublimate this idea that the kids have to come first and they have to make men, they have to make their husbands their priority. They need to make his, well, his happiness, his, his, deci his decisiveness, um, his, you know, they have to find some way to learn. Because Notice the way he talks. They have to make their husbands their priority. They have to find a way. They have to do this. They have to do that. What kind of a mindset is that? Is that a high power attitude or is that a complainer attitude? But let's get deeper now and let's get into some good psychology of misogyny. Susan Forward is a therapist who focuses on manipulation, emotional abuse, general abuse and misogyny. She wrote a great book, which I highly recommend. I highly recommend it for men, even more than for women, since she explains how misogyny develops within men and she provides a few good ideas on how to overcome it, either by yourself or in therapy. But anyway, most misogynists don't want to do therapy, but that's a different topic. Let's go back to how misogyny develops now. What Forward says is that not all misogynists, of course, but some of them have not received enough love from their mothers. So when they grow up, they grow up fearing abandonment from the second most important female figure in their life, which is their partner. I'm going to quote Susan Forward now. He didn't just forget those needs. He took them into his adult life and particularly into his relationships with women. As an adult, he expects women to meet his desperate need to be mothered in a way he never was mothered as a child. And later in the book, which I also thought was a funny quote, she says, no matter how many children there are, he, the misogynist, gets to be the number one kid. There you have it. Put me first, put me first. Women cannot put their children first. They have to put me first. Exactly like Susan Forward explains. But let's see how Rollo Tomasi think women should be taught to put grown up men before the children. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, again, that's that, that, and like, here's the thing is you, you, you can't come out against that. 
You can't come out against that and say, well, put me first, mm -hmm. right? I, I think one of the reasons why we have to have like our, our religious, you know, our pastors, our religious leaders explain this from the pulpit is because if a man, were, that's why I said your, 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 re, your listeners would get really mad at me for suggesting this, but for a man to come out and say, you need to put me first because I'm going to make a better decision that way. If you are right. the one that, you know, we're going to have a better outcome if you sublimate your interests in the children and mm -hmm. prioritize me above those children to say something like that in a, in a feminine primary social order <laughs> would, would, you know, people would run you up the flagpole. No, dude, it's not about feminine primary social order. It's about being mature, grown up folks. But look, for a second, let's move away from the pathology and let's look at this more realistically as well. It's totally understandable that one wants to be put first. I want to be put first. You want to be put first. The next guy wants to be put first. It's normal. Some of the women that I have the fondest memory of were women who put me on a pedestal, who idealized me, who thought there was some God walking on earth. God, they were wrong, but that's a different topic. The women that I remember the best are the women who put me first. But the fact that it's normal that one wants to be put first is very different from expecting it and from pretending it. Wanting it and earning it versus expecting it no matter what. Big difference. Demanding something without focusing on what you give back is entitlement mentality at its worst. I have no respect whatsoever for this attitude. It's the weakest, most pathetic, and most bound to fail form of entitlement mentality. You want to be put first? Then fucking earn it. Don't demand it. Don't expect it. Don't ask the priest to do your dirty job, but fucking earn it. Earn it. Belief system as women as generally untrustworthy, bad, or inferior to men. Of course, no red pill author will tell you publicly that's what they think. Instead, what you will hear is that no, women are just different, biologically different, neurologically different, behaviorally different, just different. It's not about being better or worse. Yet, every time you read some of their books or you listen to whatever they say, you will come out of it with the feeling that that's exactly what they think. I could give you countless of examples now for this. If you go on the Red Pill subreddit, you will get far more extreme views and it will become very, very obvious very quickly. But let's stick with the gurus and the thought leaders. It still shines through what they really think about women. Let's see. Because that's what I, I get into it with guys on, on Twitter all the time because they'll say women never apologize. And they're right. They don't. So when they do, it's this rare occasion. They never give compliments and they never apologize for anything because we live in an age where women are blameless. They're sinless. They don't do anything wrong. Only men do things wrong. How do we know that? Yeah. How do we know them, man? Guys on Twitter? You mean guys who follow you because they think like you? Because they are misogynist like you? Then that makes sense. That's called groupthink. Do women never apologize for anything or never give compliments? I haven't noticed any major difference between men and women. But hey, Maybe we just had very different experiences. So let's keep on going. Does he support the idea of a female president? No. no. Um. I'm so glad at least he was honest. It would have been such a weasel move if he had pretended he was okay with a woman as a prime minister or as president. So actually, respect to Rolo Tomasi for saying it straight. Congratulations, man. I respect that. Now, to be frank, in that case, he then started talking about Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. So I'm not sure if he meant he's not okay with a woman as president in general or just in the 2006 election. So let's keep on going. The Dalai Lama's pr presumption is that if the two, are there 200 nations? So the 200 nations of 
the world, if they were all run by women, we would have no wars. Everything would be perfect. It would be this ideal utopia. It would be my, I'm the Dalai Lama. It would be my vision of peace and harmony on earth. Did you buy that? Do you buy that? If, if all, if every nation was run by women, would, would we have peace and harmony? <laughs> I was, I didn't watch this, but I heard, I could hear the TV going downstairs. My wife and my daughter were watching The Bachelor last night. Trust me, you don't want women to be running the country after that. Trust me. <laughs> uh, let's Oh man, good to hear what it truly means to be a rational male, grounding your theories on solid data and such a deep critical analysis. I'm being sarcastic here, of course. Man, that's such fucking nonsense. Right now I'm in Berlin, in Germany. This country has been run for the last 15 years by Angela Merkel, a woman. She has been doing that job for 15 years because she has been doing a great job. Indeed, there are millions of refugees who want to come to Germany. And there are millions of European citizens, jobless European citizens, who want to move to Germany because Germany is doing great and it's the economic engine of Europe. By the way, here is the funny thing. Of all these millions of people coming here, you know what they are running away from? They are running away from countries who have been run into the ground by their male leaders. Does that tell you that maybe female leaders are better than men? No, it doesn't because it's anecdotal evidence. Sure, it's better evidence that the dumb shit Rollo Tomasi said, but it's still anecdotal evidence. And again, this is no SJB channel. As a matter of fact, the Dalai Lama was completely idiotic to say what he said. I have lost a lot of respect for the Dalai Lama after he said that. You can talk about genders in general, which are different, which obviously they are. However, you want to look at the individual more than the gender, especially when you have to elect one specific person. You are electing an individual. You are not electing the sublimated, generalized traits of the whole gender. You are electing an individual, which differs. But the way that Rolo Tomasi speaks about the possibility of a woman as president, the way he derides even the possibility there may, might be fewer war, which is certainly possible, that tells you a lot about where he stands personally in terms of bias and in terms of his own feelings towards women. Let's look at it again. Does he support the idea of a female president? No. no. My wife and my daughter were watching The Bachelor last night. Trust me, you don't want women to be running the country after that. Trust me. <laughs> uh, and one more example, quoting from one of his books. He was talking about his wife not being sympathetic towards his pain, his pain as a man, as if pain were any different between men and women. Anyway, this is what he says. Due to species beneficial hypergamy, Women fundamentally lack the capacity to empathize with the male experience. Another nonsense, in my opinion, based on no data, little experience, and a huge amount of bias. And by the way, if you think this is cherry-picking, I invite you to watch the videos in full and I invite you to read the books. Unless you're an extremist yourself, then you will most certainly pick up the strong bias against women, and this is the strongest sign of misogyny. The red pill vehemently denies of being the feminazi equivalent for men, yet that's exactly what it is. Just like its feminist counterpart, the red pill believes that men and women are locked into a war and that the opposite gender is out to get them. Rollo Tomasi believes that the gender sexual strategies are intrinsically adversarial. See, what one of the things that you have written is that the sexual mating strategies of men and women are, I believe, fundamentally at odds with one another. Um, and so, adversarial. Okay, adversarial, and they are not adversarial. This is a basic failure of understanding of evolutionary psychology. It's funny that the red pill says it's based heavily on evolutionary psychology, and yet they mostly twisted and. In good part, they 
heavily misunderstand it. Evolutionary psychology is a great, wonderful way of understanding human behavior. As a matter of fact, I say that it's a foundational. I have a very popular book list on the power moves called the best psychology book, best 55 psychology books, something like that. Anyway, the very top book is called Evolutionary Psychology by David Buss because I believe that evolutionary psychology is foundational to understand not only human psychology, but also why we are the way we are, why we do what we do, and it's crucial to understand intersexual dynamics. If you're interested in learning more about the misunderstanding of evolutionary psychology in the red pill as well as in the feminist counterpart of course please let me know i might make a video on that anyway going back to the adversarial thing they are sometimes adversarial and sometimes they have the same goal but they diverge in the way of achieving those goals however there are also crucial foundational common goals that are shared between the genders one of them, genetically speaking, obviously, is to have your children survive and thrive. After all, the biggest proof that there is much in common, that there is much shared interest between the two gender is, guess what? Relationships. If relationship didn't make sense for both genders, they would have not have evolved yet they have evolved and they are one of the major constant among all civilization wherever you go you find relationships wherever you go you find a man and a woman that tend to stick together now some societies are a little bit more monogamous some of them are a little bit less so however relationships are a constant everywhere and they are a proof that the two genders have common goals Otherwise, Rollo Thomas is married. Why would you be married if your goals are adversarial with your wife? It makes no sense. For more examples on seeing the world as a big fight, I'm gonna quote some passages from the Rational Male book. Rollo Thomas says that women are trying to insert themselves into male spaces in some twisted goals of breaking the male groups apart. Let's see what he says. Women insert themselves into male spaces to restrict and control traditional male bonding while also fostering infighting amongst in-group and out-group men. So why would they do so, says Rollo Tomasi? Because men congregating together are a threat to the feminine imperative. Man, that is such nonsense. I've been growing up in plenty of male-dominated groups. Now, let me tell you, I wished that some women joined those groups. This is an example of over-philosophizing. It's an analysis driven not by reality, not by data, not by experience, but by total bias. Anyway, keep on going. Criticizing the MTAO movement Rollo Tomasi wants to discourage men from joining the movement. The MTAO movement, by the way, is a movement where men should be going the wrong way. But they do not enter relationships, they do not get married, they do not have children, and generally they have a poor view of women, but they do not interact with them. Rollo Tomasi doesn't want people to go the MTAO way. Why not? He says. This only serves to cede power to the feminine imperative. Obviously, Rollo Tomasi sees women as a monolithic block on a mission to disempower men, and men have to band together in order to properly fight women. Rollo Tomasi doesn't want men to go the wrong way. Rollo Tomasi wants men to join the red pill and most likely to join his followers, which is good for him, right? Join me, join me in my war, join me in my anger and my hatred against women, join me in the battle. If you don't, we're screwed, and if you do, we're gonna win, and I will be more powerful as your guru, obviously. We're gonna talk about this. When a little boy acts out, or acts like a little boy, is expressing that natural, innate, kind of little boyish alphaness, we drug him. We sedate him. We give him Adderall, we give him Ritalin, we give him whatever, because he can't sit still and learn like a girl. So there must be something wrong with him. So if it's, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do one of two things: we're gonna crush it out of him, or we're gonna change him into a girl. In some cases, literally, nowadays, literally change them into girls.
Look, I don't know, that might be true, it might be overprescribed, I'm not sure. But literally, changing boys into girls, literally? Apparently, that's what Rollo Tomasi actually thinks, he says in one of his books. The village will teach your boys to feel shame for being less perfect than girls, to the point that transitioning their gender to girls will be the norm. It will be the norm? You really think that boys are gonna be turned into girls as the new normal thing? Man, that's delusional shit. And there is the interesting part though. It's exactly the same thing that feminists are saying about our society shaming women. I will quote you a few examples now so you can recognize the exact same rhetoric but specular. I'm gonna quote first the author of We Should All Be Feminists. A terrible book, by the way, don't you dare wasting time on it. Anyway, here is what she says. We teach girls, close your legs, cover yourself. We make them feel as though by being born female, they are already guilty of something. And this is what God C. wrote in her book, Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism, this is an evolutionary psychology book, by the way, and it's actually good. There are a few good ideas, except that same as for red pill books, there are a few good ideas and then a complete misunderstanding of evolutionary psychology in general, as well as being completely marred by personal biases. Here is what she says. Humans who get pink hats on the hospital and the letter F next to the name of their birth certificate as if they failed by not coming into the world as a boy. Such nonsense. And this is the last quote. This is what Susan Forward says as an example of even a more moderate woman, actually. This is the same woman who wrote the book about misogynists. I'll quote verbatim. We've all seen men portrayed in the media as stronger, more competent and smarter than women. While women are often portrayed as highly emotional, indecisive, scatterbrained, passive, illogical, manipulative, and even malevolent. So now, do you see the two positions, the feminist and the red pill, are quite the same? They are exactly the same, but specular. The feminists say we teach women that they are defective, and the red pill says we teach boys that they are defective. So what gives? Could it be maybe that both these two positions are extremists and they are both biased? I strongly believe so. They are not wrong in thinking that there is a societal tug of war between men and women. That's actually correct. The problem is that when there is so much bias on either camps, you're not going to get the truth from them. Look, power dynamics at a high societal level usually work like this. There is a tug of war from one side and a tug of war from one other side. In these groups, there are different professions, there are different industries. There is the media industry, there is the book industry. So these are pulling all in slightly different directions. And when there are so many groups pulling, it's unlikely that one group will come to dominate the other so much that the other group will be completely disempowered. It's extremely unlikely. What happens instead is that both groups become more and more extremist, more and more bitter and angrier and angrier and move farther and farther away from the truth. Why? It's a negotiation strategy. Mostly it's an unconscious one. It's like a negotiation. When you start with a negotiation, usually you want to start with a very big number and then you want to overstate your case and exaggerate a little bit. The idea is that if you go to an extreme, then you end not in the middle, but more towards your side, right? So this is exactly what is happening with these two groups, with the red pill and with the feminists. They are both pulling into more and more extremes farther and farther away. So in a way, that strategy is effective and that's why they are doing it. But the downside, the heavy downside is that they both get bitter, angry and farther and farther away from the truth. You're not going to get the truth from the red pill, no matter what they say that they're all about truth. And you're not going to get the truth from the feminists either. I hope that's clear. If not, please let me know in the comments. 
it's getting a little bit theoretical now so and i don't want to get too philosophical let's leave the philosophies to the red pill and to the feminists and for us let's stick more to practical videos so practically should you follow the red pill The world is quite politically correct these days, so there are a few advantages in the red pill. There are indeed some good analysis, and it is indeed free of political correctness. That's a good thing. Another thing that I really want to say is that this video sounds hypercritical. Well, it is hypercritical. But I have learned a lot in the red pill. There are a few great authors, and I have also learned a lot from Rollo Tomasi. I think I will learn even more from him, and there are things that I respect and I admire about him. That being said, I will not recommend anybody to stay in the red pill or to keep following the red pill. It's not the best place. As we've seen, it's heavily biased, it's misogynist, and it promotes an abusive mindset. I cannot stand behind it. Not only it's bad for the people around you, but it's also bad for you. Ultimately, it's disempowering for you, first and foremost. One important thing I would like you also to reflect on. The red pill is all about conflicts of interest. And understanding conflicts of interest is crucial to understand how the world works and how to be effective in that world. I think indeed that conflicts of interest is one of the biggest luck in any self-development field these days. The red pill is heavy into conflicts of interest, but conflict of interest are everywhere. As an example, conflict of interest are also present between thought leaders and followers. Think about this. Do you think it's good for the gurus to empower their followers so they can go ahead with their lives and live happily ever after without needing the gurus? Or is it better for the guru to keep their followers angry and bitter and complaining so that they keep going on YouTube and buy their books to listen to their rants and tirades. What do you think is better? For sure it's better for the gurus to keep you angry and bitter, but it's not good for you. And you have nothing to gain in thinking that society is stacked up against you. As a matter of fact, I cannot think of any more disempowering belief. Do you really believe this society is all against you? Do you really believe you're losing? Do you really believe women are kicking your ass left and right? then you're already a loser, man. Let me paraphrase what John Freeman says on the Power Moves Forum. I leave the bitches to the other guys to fight and complain about. That's what the red pill does, complaining. I choose the smart, kind and beautiful women. As they say, in life, you find what you're looking for. But the truth is, there is more power in being a high quality man today than there has ever been in the history of the world. So quit whining, bitch.